Hi. In this tutorial, I will show you how to incorporate radio buttons to allow the user to select which images get displayed in a picture box. This example is similar to my last tutorial called Images, Picture Boxes, and Buttons, but uses radio buttons rather than the usual square or rectangle buttons. Now, the new version, uh, the, the VB.net, calls these buttons radio buttons. They were called option buttons in the past, so if I revert to my old days, forgive me. So let's start Visual Basic Express and create a new project. I'm naming this one Images and Radio Buttons. In the usual place. Now because we would like to use these images that I showed earlier, these guys here, in the usual way let's add them to our resources. So click on Project and then our Applications Properties and then Resources and then let's drag I'm going to drag my small images into my resources. Okay. The little asterisk here says that the project has not been saved yet and these resources cannot be used until that happens so I'm going to go ahead and press the save now. I can get rid of this window I won't need it anymore. And again, we need to add a picture box in the usual way. Whatever size. We're going to fill it in just a minute. Let's change the name of the picture box. The prefix is PIC, and then you can choose any name you want. I'm going to choose My Image. And let's make it nice looking, so or somewhat nice looking. So let's change the back color, whatever color you want, or you can omit this step. It's not critical. I'm going to change the border style again, a not critical thing. I just like the way it looks offset. And then I'm going to choose the image that I want to display in there. Now this is just temporary. I'm going to get rid of it. But for now, I want that image so I can then resize the form the way I want it. Before I can do that, though, I want to go down to size mode and change it from normal to center image. Now I can resize the, the picture window any way I want to get the dimensions just so. All right. So once that's done, I'm going to click back in the picture box and delete the image that I am using. Now to do that I'm going to double click on the name of the image and then with my keyboard I'm going to press the delete key so it goes away. Next we want to add some radio buttons so the user can select which image to display. First we should add a container which is below the common controls and this container will hold our radio buttons making it easy for them to move around and this container will set them apart from other radio buttons if we choose to add them. So there are lots of containers and I'm going to choose the group box here for this application. Just draw it over here on the side. And the only thing we need to change on the group box is the text. and I'm going to say select an image. enter and you can see that the text here changes. Let's now put in six radio buttons inside the container, one for each image we would like to display. So the radio buttons are back here under the common controls. I'm just going to click inside the container and then uh, place my radio button in the center. Make sure you click inside the container and not on the form. You want the radio button to belong to the container. All right, one more. Now notice if we click on the container itself, we can grab this button here. We can move all six radio buttons around. 
Let's click on the first radio button and let's change the text to something like this. Now I'm going to show you a little shortcut here. You don't actually have to click on or highlight radio button one here to change the text. As long as this guy is highlighted, you can simply just type it in. Image 13, that's my first image. So if you hit enter, you can see that radio button one has changed to image 13. Now the text is the is the property highlighted, so if I go down to my next button, button two, I don't have to click on the text at all, I can just start typing the text. Image 14. And do the same with the next button. And the next one. And so on. That's a nice little time saver. So we've changed the text of our buttons. But it's also nice to change the name so we, when we program it, we um, don't have to remember which one is radio button 1 and which one is radio button 2 and so on. So in the same way, I'm going to click on the name and now change the name. I don't know what the standard is, but uh, I always use the OPT prefix for radio buttons. Again, the previous versions of Visual Basic called them option buttons, and so that makes a nice prefix, OPT, for option button. And then I want to change the name here to image 13. Hit enter. And then just do the same thing. Again, we don't have to select the name or highlight the name. We can just change it. OPT, image 14, and so on. Make sure you spell the names properly and correctly. which one you're doing. Also, names cannot have spaces. Sometimes if you put a space in there, it'll tell you it's wrong. Image 18. All right. Now, perhaps for cosmetic sake, I'd like to resize the container. And notice that if I grab the container and move it around, all my buttons move. And just to make it look nice, I'm going to resize the form. All right, let's take a look at the most important property of the radio button, the checked property. So if we select a radio button, we can come down to checked and see that its property is equal to false. If we change that to true, it's not hard to imagine what happens. The little button is selected with a, a black dot inside. So let's run it and see what happens. Now, if we select different images, or different buttons, because we haven't really put in code here, but select different buttons, notice that only one of these radio buttons can be selected at a time. That's because these buttons are grouped together inside this container, and so you can change uh, one button at a time. If we had a separate container, we could, of course, change these buttons and then change the, those in the other container. Now let's add code to the form load. So the first image displayed is, oh, let's, let's choose image 15. So to do that, let's double click on the form and make sure you click on the form and not on the picture box in the container. So if you double click on the form, the form one load method will open. This subprogram runs every time the application runs. So let's type in the code to change the picture box image to image 15. We just chose 15 as a random selection. See if you can do it before I do. Recall that you'll need to use the resources, which is in the namespace my dot resources dot and then we'll just select image 15. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. So now this is odd. This is image 15, but image 13 is the one that's selected. So I think it would be nice to make this radio button here be the one that's checked or selected. 
So that code is pretty easy. Option. Now the option button we're wanting is 15. And we want the property checked. equal true. Alright, so now if we run it, everything should be in sync. 15 is the image and 15 is the radio button. But notice that these buttons do not do anything. If I click on them, uh, the images that they represent do not show up, of course. We haven't written the code for it, so let's do that now. So let's go back to the design window. Double click our radio button to add code behind that. So now when the radio button is checked or is clicked, then this check changed method will run. And we just need to add one line of code. We need to tell it that the picture box, the my picture box, the image needs to equal picture 13. So my resources. 13. There you go. Okay. Now we're going to use this same exact code for every one of our buttons. So to make it quick and easy, I'm going to highlight this line, right click and copy it. Going back to our design window, I'm going to double click on image 14. I'm going to paste it and simply change the 13 to a 14. Do this for every one. Again, pasting and changing. You lose track of where they are. So Seventeen. One more. You gotta make sure that you match up the right image with the, the right button. All right, let's run that, and see if it works. So image 15 was our default. It's our default button. 13, 14, back to 15, 16, 17, 18. How about that? Pretty nice, huh? Well, this concludes our tutorial on images and radio buttons. Join us next time for a little quiz. Thanks for watching.